Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Books Weekly, my Sunday video in which I discuss books that I've either finished from a previous week or read last week or started last week. And the first book is the book that I've started uh, last week and finished, obviously, this week, duh, and that is Heidi Judavit's A Folded Clock, A Diary, it's called. It was published in 2015. Heidi Julewitz, I talked a little bit about her in my last Books Weekly. So she's an American author and co-founder of the magazine The Believer. And the book, The Folded Clock, is it's called a diary. So you expect a sort of a memoir and that's it, but not quite. It's a diary in the sense that each piece of text starts with a date and starts with a sentence similar to today I did this or me and my friend went to the school today. So the, the opening of each chapter is a kind of diary entry and this relates to, this opening today, I relates to a diary that Heidi Julewitz kept when she was a child. Um, she explains that in the beginning that she was given a, a diary when she was nine or ten years old and she wrote in it every day religiously when she was a child and each day she would start with today I went to school, today I watched television. So she picked up this way of starting a day or an entry with the today I did such and such. But from then on, each entry is much more um, a personal essay, a re reflection on a certain theme that was sparked by the event with which the entry is started. So Julewitz, over the course of uh, two and a half years, that's the span of dates we get in, in the book, um, discusses things that are obviously important to her. Friendship, motherhood, female identity, but also things to do with writing, um, uh, culture, art, with a heavy, I would say, with a with a with a heavy focus on on relationships. I liked the book. I I didn't love it, but I I liked it. Uh, one of the reviewers on Goodreads said, "If you read the book, it's like having coffee and a chat with one of your smartest girlfriends," and that's exactly it. So if you like this kind of casual, uh, chatty, essay book about. Um, various topics in in a intelligent but but yeah casual manner presented in a casual manner then i'm sure you will like it but don't expect uh, a memoir in the strict sense or a diary in the strict sense and my feeling was that sometimes it was a little um yeah too casual it 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 was like a, a little you know soft stream um, murmuring along without, or at least for me, not very often that an entry or one of these personal eth essays really sparked uh, something in me. It, it was interesting and, and nice and casual to read, um, but for me at least it lacked a certain edge to it. But Still, I, I enjoyed uh, enjoyed the read, and like I said, if you like these kind of personal essays centering around identity, friendship, relationships, art, culture, then this might be a book for you. On to the second book, that is a new release, uh, Mac Howry, The Wanderers. It came out in the US, I believe, in February, and in the UK at the beginning of this month, beginning of April. I talked already about this book in my uh, April to be released video, um, but you might not have watched it, so very briefly, Mac Howry is an American author who used to be a ballet dancer before she became an author, and um, the she published previous novels, one of which, The Crane's Dance, is about the private life of dancers. And I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, so I had 
yeah, quite high expectations. I was looking forward um, to The Wanderers. The Wanderers is a science fiction book. It's set in the future and it's about a mission to Mars. The main characters are three astronauts chosen for the first uh, mission to Mars, Helen, uh, a seasoned astronaut in her 50s, and uh, Japanese Joshi, Yoshi, I think you pronounce his name, and the Russian Sergei. So these three are picked for this first mission, but before they can go on the mission, there has to be a serious rehearsal. So they will spend 18 months in a simulation uh, somewhere in the desert where they are in a spaceship on Earth, obviously, and if they go out, they experience surroundings as if they were on Mars. So it's a it's an yeah extensive simulation of this voyage um, uh, to Mars. The book is told from their perspective, so those three astronauts plus plus a family member from each astronaut. For Helen, for example, it's her daughter Mireille um, plus um, a liaison officer from the NASA. So we have seven points of views. Now, I was a bit disappointed with the book. Let me say that up front. I, uh, for, for, yeah, one reason for this was probably because I expected something different, which has to do with the way the book was marketed. Note to the publishers. Don't market a book as a mix of The Martian and Station Eleven if it's not. Note to the publishers, don't market books with this is another Gone Girl or this is like The Martian. This seems to be um, quite the rage at the moment. I don't know, 90% of the new releases I read, the blurb, the publisher's blurb or marketing pitch uh, tells me that this is, I will like this book if I liked that book. Don't do that. That's lazy and stupid. So don't do it. And especially don't do it if it's wrong. Because The Wanderer is not a mix between The Martian and Station Eleven. First of all, it's not an action book. Nothing happens. Nothing serious or, or accidents or life-threatening events. That's not at all what the book is about. The book is very quiet, very slow, and it's told, like I said, from these seven points of views, um, focusing on what happens when you prepare for such a long mission, from the point of view from, of the astronauts, what, what happens between you know the three people when they are confined to a closed environment they can't go out but also what happens to your uh, family the the fact that you are not able to see or really communicate uh, with your family so that is what the book is about i mean the setting is in the future and there is some you know science fiction -y, uh yeah aspect to it but it, it, it's not a sci-fi book, and it's certainly not an action sci-fi book. Um, I, I will leave a link to a review done by Mercedes from uh, over at Mercy's Bookish Musings. She, she had similar issues with it. She was a bit harsher than I was because I thought there were things in it. If you go into the book with that mindset that you know there will be no Martian accident, life-threatening situation happening, there is certainly, um, yeah, you, you, there's, there is stuff in that book to like, but overall I thought it was just, it just didn't do it for me. It, it, I got bored, I find it, find it difficult to all, constantly switch point of views between these seven people. So yeah, it, it was a, it, it, it was a disappointment. It's not, Certainly not the, the, the worst book I've ever read. It's not a bad book in, in that sense. I gave it three stars in the end. Um, but it's I would not recommend this book to hardcore science fiction fans. I would much more think this is a book for people who are interested 
in um, a, a slow, quiet book about relationships and especially uh, what happens to relationships if you're separated. So maybe you want to try it. If you have read it, uh, let me know what you what you thought of it. Um, uh, and if, if you think, well, that might sound interesting, give it a try. The next book I've read is also a new release. It came out in the beginning of April, and I also mentioned this one in the uh, to be released in April video I've, I've uh, mentioned before, and that is Blythe Rippon Benched. Now, Blythe Rippon um, is a, a blogger, a writer, a podcast. I will leave uh, a link to her um, blog, WordPress blog, down in the description box. And Benched is the second in a series called Love and Law. And the first one in the series was called Barring Complications, because it's all about people who are members of the bar. And the two main characters in the first book of the series, the same as now in the second book, are a, a Supreme Court judge, Victoria, and um, a high-profile LGBTQ rights lawyer, Genevieve. In, in the first book, which I really liked, we, we see Victoria navigating, you know, becoming a member of the, the highest court in, in the US, and then meeting somebody with whom she falls in love. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a law romance, but I, I, I liked um, Barring Complications. So I was looking forward to the second book in, in the series, and I was, I was disappointed. We, the relationship between those two women is explored further. Um, it's, uh, the book opens when uh, the relationship w was a secret, um, uh, and they only just started getting getting serious when, when the book opens, and then all of a sudden um, a, a, a picture photograph is published where Victoria uh, and her girlfriend kiss, or almost kiss. And from there on, they have to deal with the fact, what does it mean for their relationship, because cases that Genevieve puts in front of the court, can Victoria... Um, uh, hear those cases, and then you know they there's quarrel and they get separate. I don't know. First of all, I I thought well those are two high profile career women in their forties, and I had the feeling throughout the book that they acted like teenagers. Um, that was my first moi, and the second was that I yeah I felt the relationship was, was pictured or, or described in a very stereotypical way that you know or, or might expect from um, male-female romance books and, and not the best ones of those. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I just I didn't like the way the, the, the second book was set up, how the relationship was pictured. I thought it was boring. Uh, it it was uh, foreseeable, very predictable. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe the third book. I, I expect that there will be there will be more books in the series. Maybe the next book will will be better because I think Blythe Rippon can write a good book. But this one benched. It it just didn't do it for me. And the last book is the book that I've just started this weekend, and it's a non-fiction book. It's Mary McCarthy, A Bolt from the Blue. And I look at this beauty. I just picked this up secondhand, but it's it's in pristine condition. With the, the inside is is completely clean. I don't know. Maybe the person who sold it didn't didn't read it, and the, the uh, dust cover is is perfect. So anyway. <laughs> Mary McCarthy, Bold from the Blue, that's an essay collection, um, which in, in this form, uh, with a nice picture of the author on the cover, was published in 2002. And if you listen to my channel, follow my channel, or follow me on, on Twitter or other social media, and you know that I love Mary McCarthy, um, and I wanted this edition of a collection of her essays for a long time, and when I found it, I was really happy. So I will start this, her essay, starting in the 1960s. 
and I will talk more about it and um, you can expect another gush this time about Mary McCarthy probably I don't know whether I finish next week or the week thereafter but there will be a gush a Mary McCarthy gush coming your way soon so this was it for this week's Books Weekly. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Happy Easter, of course. Leave comments, as always, if you want to talk to me about the books I've mentioned or about other books. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.